afternoon, we had a number of lectures or presentations relating to history. And so I'd like to go back to our uh, historians and resource persons. And uh, Dr. Margai and Dr. Janes and myself, we will spend a few minutes talking about uh, concerns that historians have, how we do things, how we work on things, how we do research, how we started on this. And so uh, maybe let me turn, you, turn us over to uh, Dr. Margai. Uh, alam mo, Ferdi, hmm. ang ganda ng sinurat mo sa ano Inquirer. Ano yun? sa Buddha, Diyos, ah, at ang bansa. Hmm. So siguro pwede mo naman ipaliwanag ka konti ah, uh, tungkol dito sa mga pangyayari ito. Oh, sige, uh, yung article na yan, hiningi talaga sa akin ang editor yan, ang Inquirer. Hmm. Kasi alam mo naman itong si Presidente, eh, minention niya yung Buddha, Diyos. Eh, pag tinignan mo yung social media, ang dami talaga ng mga data na mabas. Because the difference now, and yung mga unang panahon, in the internet, available ang mga, ano, ang mga data, sources, yung ganun. So, pero maganda yung point ng editor na as historians, how do we frame and present this to our present audience? Na maraming nagtatalo kung ano nangyari dito, yung ganun. So, ako naman, Eh, I made it a point na as you know, dahil tayo yun nandito sa discipline ng history to make sure that my sources are really documentary evidence of what happened in Budajo and in Budbagsak in the beginning of American colonization. No? Kaya makikita mo doon, dalawang main sources ko lang doon eh. Yung Philippine Commission Report at sila talaga nag-report sa US na ano nangyayari dito Plus, yung report ng isang Amerikanong pumunta dito who went around mga Moro barrios, he said, to ask the elders about what happened. Kaya I use that source. You know why? Kasi sinabi niya eh. Like, so, saan kaya ang source nito? Eh, 20-something years na siyang pumunta after. So, sabi ko, saan source? And then sabi niya, ito mga in-interview ko. So, I thought it was kind of reliable. No? Kasi sabi niya, Ba, uh, mga elders. So, kininta ko, kung ang mga elders ang sinasabi niya, siguro mga 60s, then going back mga 20 years, so siguro yung mga 20s, nasa 20s, mm -hmm. yung ano, mm -hmm. at informants. informants. At kung 20s sila nung time na yun, natatandaan talaga nila. Okay. Yung Maganda yung binanghit mo. Alam mo, sa disiplina kasi nakasaysayan. May dalawang mahalagang kang binanghit. Una, yung sources. Mm -hmm. no? So, napakahalaga para sa historian o para isulat ang kasaysayan o ang nakaraan, meron tayong sources. Mm -hmm. Pangalawa na nakita kong mahalaga na pinanggit mo ay yung metodo ng oral history. Kasi mm -hmm. sabi mo ay uh, uh, nakapanayan yung mm -hmm. mga nakasaksi ng panyayari. Mm -hmm. So, sa history, talagang mahalaga yung sources, no? Uh, at pangalawa, isang paraan ng pagkukuha ng datos tungkol sa nakaraan at ito yung oral history. Tama. Okay. Aside from that, yung yeah. relating to yung mga sinabi natin, mm -hmm. nagpunento natin sa, sa camera, mm -hmm. is na lahat tayo ay meron tayong uh, sariling interest or we have our own particular uh, hobbies, if you might mm -hmm. say, na, which got us interested in what we're doing. Side, uh, Dr. Kamagay, Women's History, mm -hmm. uh, Kayo Ferdi, so you did your just letters, no? mm -hmm. the examining letters of Comines on the Japanese occupation. Mm -hmm. We look at it from different levels, from different mm -hmm. uh, perspectives, mm -hmm. but it all winds up in that all of this is very exciting material. No? So again, oral history, letters, the published histories, but we also have relics, we also have visits to the place it happened, mm -hmm. and then uh, there are other beyond. I think most people think that the archives are mm -hmm. in the university and the library. Yes, that is of course the best, mm -hmm. uh, very basic. So you can see the writing that you can see shift from uh, reform to revolution. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's for archival, traditional mm -hmm. ways, but then so women, so Second World War, so that we also have different approaches and different sources. So, maybe, how did you get interested dun sa uh, letters mm -hmm. na yun? Ano nangyari? Eh, katulad din dyan sa Buddha, Joe, yung alam mo naman siguro ng 
audience natin ngayon yung kumisan tinatawag nila yung Battle of Buddha Jo o at saka Battle of Buddha Pagsa. Pero yung ilang moro ano, mga uh, communities, ang tawag dyan, massacre. Mm-hmm. No? Kaya nga sabi ko, we have to look into the documents. No? Na, na yan, na ano ba talaga yan? Massacre, battle, no? So, itong akin namang research na pinresign ko dito sa project na ito, ito yung, uh, yung transition ng thinking ng mga propagandista no? from reform to revolution. Because traditionally, and even yung ating audience siguro, ang alam talaga natin is propaganda, and then mamaya-maya, revolution na. And then nobody asks na, meron bang nagba- nagbahago sa isip ng mga, ng, mga, ng, mga ka- ng mga participants? And even when I was a student, and even when I was a young, young historian, young pa rin naman, no? younger of historian. Of course. No? Eh, yeah. oo, sabi ko, hindi ko rin alam yan, pa nagtuturo na ako, o kinasang propaganda, and then nagrevolusyon. Mga estudyante ko naman, hindi nagtatanong, sir, pa paano nagtransition yun sa revolusyon? Ito, interestingly, eh, sa mall, nag-start yung aking ano dyan, eh, hindi sinasadya. Eh. And you know, historians, marami tayong mga researchers, we just stumbled on it. And then later, we build this into a you know, more systematic uh, inquiry and research. And then later, we come up with general statements. But actually, we just started with this thing. Kaya ito, nasa mo lang ako. Eh, alam mo naman, mahiling tayo mga antik-antik. <laughs> Pati mga libro. Eh, dito sa Mega Mall yata ako, nakita ko, wow! Yung Epistolario Rizalino. I knew it was about the letters of Rizal and the propagandists. So, binili ko, eh, no, medyo mura pa, pero alam mo, may mahal na rin sa mga ganyan, eh, mga, collect, mga collectors uh, shops yan, eh, no? Pag-uwi ko, and for the following weeks, nag-enjoy lang basahin yung mga letters ni Rizal sa kanyang kapatid, letters ni Rizal sa mga kapwa ni propagandista. And then, after some time, may image na na bubo. Sabi ko, well, going back to my, you know, undergrad years, and even in my graduate years, sabi ko, teka, bakit sinabi ni, and I'll mention Edelberto Evangelista, he will become a katipulero later, no? Because he studied in your Paris, no? He was an engineer, no? So, sabi niya, magtayo tayo ng club revolusyonano. Eh sabi ko, teka, mga propagandista to ah. Eh bakit ito eh, revolusyonaryo? O oh, tapos pag tingnan mo, by date, tingnan mo, makikita mo, merong particular date doon na nagbabago yung kanilang thinking. Eh di mo alam naman natin, propaganda, reforms. Ang Pilipinas, mas maganda maging provincia ng Espanya. Pero ito, club revolusyonaryo. That means, it's quite different. So you know, alam mo naman sa ating work, Sometimes we look at you know, oddities. No? Mm-hmm. What's different? Mm-hmm. And then when it strikes you, mm-hmm. yeah. bakit ito nang ito? And I think that was the key. Mm-hmm. Na sabi ko, ah, we can feel a gap here. Mm-hmm. And the gap is, yung transition nga. Mm-hmm. Na dati, propagandista sila, reform, reform, reform. Mm-hmm. And then, gradually, gradually meron pa lang talagang nangyayari sa utak nila. Mm-hmm. Na shifting to revolution. Mm-hmm. Ang alam nga lang natin, oh, propagandista yan, reform lang yan, eh, dyan yan, tapos. And then, Bonifacio, Katipuna. We didn't realize na yung mismo mga propagandista, their minds were changing. And that was very revealing. And then, unti-unti, I go deep. I, I went deeper. And then, look at the events na nandun din sa letters. And again, as you mentioned, yung importante ng the sources that we use. Sometimes, we just tumble in it. But later we, sh- we, 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 you know, we bring it up into some kind of an image based on the patterns that we see from the, the sources. No? Ay, ko naman ang kwento. Eh, well, naman well actually, uh, while I was listening to you, as a history kasi, we always take a look at the context. It's mm-hmm. very, very important. Events have to be contextualized. Uh, and well, for, your exa- for my example, when I was reading a particular document in, in Spain, mm-hmm. it had something to do with the cigarreras. 
si Guerrera, so, yes. yung gumagawa so, um, ng uh, rolling, they made cigar. rolling paper. <laughs> anyway, uh, yung context of course was that uh, the person who was uh, making a report about women who did not report to work. Mm -hmm. Ang ginamit ay uh, parang etantrum. Etantrum? Mm -hmm. Oo, uh, hindi welga. Oh. Parang alboroto. Alboroto mm -hmm. yung term. Mm -hmm. So, if... Parang dadabog, ano? Parang dadabog. dadabog. Oh, tantrum. Di pumasok mm -hmm. sa pabrika at uh, sinabi ay ganun nga. It was a tantrum. But, uh, okay, if you were a male and I was, you know, a female mm -hmm. reading it, mm -hmm. I said, this is not, this is not a uh, alboroto. It's mm -hmm. a welga. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In other words, yung point of view ay ang babae walang kakayahan magwelga at talaki lamang ang pwedeng lapatan ng salitang welga. So kung sila ay hindi pumasok, ay yun ay isang alboroto. Okay. So I think in history, it was uh, very important that uh, there were women now who were having careers as historians and felt that women were legitimate you know, uh, uh, subjects for history. So uh, I think that was my turning point uh, as a histor a woman historian that really, um, I mean, one should focus now on women because they have been really marginalized or invisible in history. So for me, that was uh, uh, my entry point to uh, an interest of women. So sa history kasi, talagang yun, uh, you have to learn about the period, so that was 19th century, and for the men, uh, women were not capable of a strike, and if they did not report to work, it was because they were making a tantrum. Mm -hmm. Baka, baka tampo nga lang. Uh, tampo, tampo. <laughs> so, importante sa history yung ganun contextualizing, mm -hmm. at uh, maganda rin yung pinunto mo na talagang uh, kapaloob niyan yung ano viewpoint kasi at that time women as i said were not regarded uh, yeah as uh, highly as uh, men so a viewpoint is also very important you know, in history that's why i always feel that you know uh, there, there's always the question in history uh, are you telling the truth? No, it's, uh, we're, we're also, also always wanting to say, okay, we want to know the truth. But I feel that it's not truth with the capital letter T. It's the small letter T. And it's not that truth, but a truth that we are making as historians. So there's no finality because, uh, you know, like Dr. Jose said, it's it's uh, based on new sources. Mm -hmm. It's uh, your interpretation will change because of these uh, new mm -hmm. sources. So that's that's that makes history very dynamic mm -hmm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. So that was my uh, interest, my entry point to uh, mm -hmm. to uh, interest on women's history. Mm -hmm. They can take off. From oh, ikaw nakikita kita nun, mga resusot ka pa ng mga uniform ng hapon eh. When you, ikaw nakikita ko sa ano? It's very important that you mentioned perspective because mm -hmm. yeah. when I was young, simply, the Second World War was still mm -hmm. very well talked about by everybody mm -hmm. and uh, we had all these relics around and uh, like any typical boy of my age, I think, played war also. They uh, had guns and all of this and, and we heard all the stories about the war. Always the mm -hmm. Americans were the good guys, the Filipinos were supporting, the Japanese were bad. Mm -hmm. And as I grew into my later childhood and then in my teens, I heard a different story. So my parents belonged to, they were in different places during the mm -hmm. war. My father was in San Juan, my mother was in San Juan, City. Mm -hmm. My father's father, I learned later, was killed by the Japanese, but they, ne they never told me that. But uh, from the San Juan side, it seems they didn't have that much of a problem as in Manila. They had Japanese friends, my uncle learned Japanese uh, language and Japanese music. And then I realized, why do we lump the Japanese as enemies and mm -hmm. samasila, killers? Mm -hmm. I got a very different perspective from the Zambuang experience. So they were human. Mm -hmm. And then my, my uncle made it a point to try to contact his friends in Japan after mm -hmm. the war, and he did. 
And sabi ko, we, we don't know the Japanese side of the story. The thing is, when you're talking about the war, kailangan all sides yun eh. You cannot talk about the war from one side alone because lalabas ulit yung mga passion. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, we have American sources, the Philippine sources are here, but the people were not making use of them yet. But yung Japanese side was unknown. So that got me into studying on Japan, mm -hmm. studying Japanese, uh, eventually ended up studying in Japan itself. We tried to complete that process. Then you find out the Australians were here, also the Mexicans were mm -hmm. here, the Chinese were here. And so to come up with the more holistic view of the world, one would look at all these different peoples, mm -hmm. the Igorots were involved, the Muslims were involved, and then there were different examples, different mm -hmm. experiences in different parts of the country. So it was not a cut and paste type of black and white mm -hmm. thing. There were so many varied traditions mm -hmm. to know. So that's where I learned how complicated this was. Mm -hmm. And how in studying history, you have to take into account all these different perspectives and then try to come up with a narrative that addresses the different perspectives. Mm -hmm. But of course, that changes with time also because when I was growing up, there were very few technical sources. Now, in the internet, there's so many things of the world now. And sa presentation mo, tungkol sa Japanese, the culture, mm -hmm. yes. the cultural mindset, the one that was being imposed by the Japanese, and the one that was countering it on the ground mm -hmm. in the Filipino uh, cultural mindset. No? Napaka important rin yan kasi previously we don't get to discuss this dimension of, you know, of our history. It's simply events, no? But the one that you presented was very good because for at least we are presented with another way of looking at the Japanese occupation. Na hindi lang ito mga tagutong, barila, and ganyan. It is really something new. And maybe you can tell us also how you got into you know looking at the cultural dimension of things. No? Yeah. Also, well, uh, by looking at it, when we talk of wars, it's always battles here. Mm, yeah. Then you know, oh. find out, no, during occupation, there was a fairly stable period where my mother went to school, my father learned, mm -hmm. also went to school at the time. Mm -hmm. And those things were not tackled in, in the mm -hmm. occupation. Mm -hmm. So then, then I found the new, the, the, I found pieces of music mm -hmm. on, from the war. I asked my mother to play them. And that immediately contacted me said, what happened in 1942, I'm listening to now. Mm -hmm. that, that gave me a very great thrill. To me. Mm -hmm. It's like a cut through time. Mm -hmm. And then later on with technology, you would see the same thing when you look at the photograph and you find the photograph. That also breaks through time because mm -hmm. you can see this is what, 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 mm -hmm. what the camera saw. Mm -hmm. And then with audio visual recordings from that time, you also mm -hmm. get to see even though you were not there, you could hear the sounds of that time. Mm -hmm. You could see people as they moved at that mm -hmm. time. So you really have a different perspective. And then through that comes the cultural side of it, which was not really that well documented. Mm -hmm. But if I know, the theater was active at that mm -hmm. time, uh, drama. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there were all these other things that were going on that more or less when you talk about war, you, you don't talk about those. But then it came out. Right? Mm -hmm. It's another dimension. You know, it, even women have a different view of war. When you read the stories by women like mm -hmm. um, the one written by Montenola. Yes, Lourdes um, yes, Montenola. Yes, Lourdes Montenola. Breaking Montenola, the Silence. Breaking mm -hmm. the silence uh, or even the work of um, this Jacinto Pestaño mm -hmm. on uh, yes. uh, Living, Living with the Enemy. I was struck by how different uh, they look because I think women became saw the, uh, the experience more in an intimate way. Uh, they focused on um, everyday life. So their take on the war was so, I mean, we're so used with the battles that you were saying. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, when you see and you read, you know, these uh, memoirs of women. But uh, they humanized the war in a mm -hmm. sense because yes. they were talking about their feelings, how their fears, you know, and their desperations, and that I think is something missing in uh, mm -hmm. in the discussing the war. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I I appreciate that Nico would say was saying in one video that you know the 1935 Commonwealth period mm -hmm. up to 45. 
it's uh, mostly concentrated on the three years of Japanese occupation. Mm -hmm. How about mm -hmm. the years it's before, before that, right. no? which is often that's used right. as peacetime, that's it's right. referred to as peacetime, that's never bothered mm -hmm. to be studied at all. Uh, and so I think there's some injustice for mm -hmm. us historians yeah. that, that we're focusing on the war, war. but we don't speak about the peacetime. Mm -hmm. no? What preceded no, yeah. the war? What preceded the war? That's when women won the right to vote. That's yes, right. exactly. That's where <laughs> I find the, the, uh, that women were there because yeah. that was one of the achievements of the Commonwealth yes. government. It was uh, the time when they were given the right to vote. Mm -hmm. And then the national language. Yeah, yeah. Language. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah. you know, I, I feel that uh, we should be working historians. Uh, to document this particular period, period. Yeah. 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 Once in a while, you see all this transition, it's not only transition in perspective mm. from our point of view, but transition in their perspective. perspective. Because yeah. from, this, yeah, especially as you pointed out, from reform to revolution, mm. then from revolution, how do you fit that under the Americans when they come in? Mm. How do you continue the fight, but you know you can't fight with arms mm. anymore? So there's transition there again. Mm. And then the Commonwealth was transition, Japanese yeah. occupation was transition, and right now with the presidency, now it's transition also. Mm. So you, you find clues to how we behave mm. to historical. Maganda nga yung uh, binanggit mo na yung women looking at, at events in which they are participant differently from the men or the, the intellectuals siguro na nagsusulat about those times. No? When I was in Cuba just uh, last year, no? I found a sa mga, mga relics a shop then no? it's a diary or not a diary but a, an account of a Cuban woman mm -hmm. who was in the Philippines during the Philippine Revolution mm -hmm. oh and I medyo mahal pero binili ko na ang mahal ang pamasaya sa Cuba so oh my god sayang naman babalik ka ba hindi naman kaya hindi naman kaya po yan pero uh -huh. ano you see we're, we, we're used to thinking that the revolution was something that uh, everybody welcome. No, of course, we know that there were also traitors and all these things. But this one is somebody who is not on either side. Nung binabasa ko na, nagalit siya sa mga katipunero. Kaya sabi niya, mga walang niya, ito mga ito. <laughs> Imagine, you know? Na suddenly, yung perspective mo changes, no? Na, oh my God, no? Tapos, nung, eh, nagkataon, yung mga Cubans din doon. And na, uh, mga, ito, mga komunista, ito, mga revolutionary. Pinakita ko na ko, but can you talk Cuban like that? Tawa sa nan tawa. Ay nan ito yung Cuban na yun, tumira siya. Mm -hmm. At napangaganda ng source because you get a view of society differently from mm -hmm. how a katipunero would look at it. Because you see things na hindi normally na, kasi yung mga historians, di pili nyo, uy, yung account ni ganitong katipunero. Mm -hmm. And then, and you see how it would affect the narrative, di ba? If, if you get sources ng mga katipunero, um, Mariano Alvarez, uh, Santiago Alvarez, Aguinaldo, yung narrative mo rin will be greatly influenced by the accounts of these people. But if you get the account of this Cuban, na ibang outsider siya dyan, and then he would look at the revolution, eh di parang may kulang ka sa istorya. And then when we go to class, to the classroom, represent natin yan, the way we have seen things, and how we, we framed it, based on the sources that traditionally we use. Yes. No? Eh, important din talaga yung, ano, yung, yung framing then mm -hmm. based on our points of view, mm -hmm. our perspectives, our context. Yes. No? Mm -hmm. At yung siguro hindi rin napapansin ng maraming tao na the historian also acts on sources in a personal way. Yes. Diba? The way, the way you, you relate it. it. Diba? 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 You read it and then you relate it to your family. Yes. Your father was, you know, involved. You know, that's it, no? I was there when I was reading the, you know, the, the letters of Rizal. I was in Madrid. Mm. You can relate. You can. I was relating, and then I was crying, no? And for the first time, as archivist, I was crying. I was crying because I was suffering. Because it was very intimate, eh? because it's family. Eh? Mm. Yung sina Lucia writing to Rizal, talking about this one, and somehow it affects me. It affected me. And that moved me to really write about it mm -hmm. and, you know, draw patterns for me. Mm -hmm. The same way with you also, di ba? Sabi na, ano pa naman itong babae na ito? Ba't nag-aalboroto? Mm -hmm. Narinig ko lang yan sa lola ko eh. Mm -hmm. O, oh, tumigil na nga dyan, nag-aalboroto na naman ngayon. Mm -hmm. Ba't may sinabing, ano, yung nagbelga nga, ano? Mm -hmm. 
parang may something is reserved for women, no? Mm. Yeah, you know, um, one thing uh, it reminded me also of, you know, the uh, the historian really uh, uh, being affected by by the sources, no? Uh, because the historian eventually will be the one who will harness the sources for his or her use. Right. Right? Yeah. lang siya. Pero, uh, they become historical if you get them no? uh, and use them for your interpretation. Mm. Ngayon, uh, nabanggit mo yung... I had a similar experience. You know, I was doing my mm. research sa Archive uh, de Quedo say It's a foreign mm. affairs. Mm. And it's it was uh, usually that afternoon it's open. So I was reading the consular dispatches of the French, no, mm -hmm. reporting what was happening here in the Philippines. So yun isang ano, yun isang uh, dispatch. Sabi, oh, Paris na yung mga Castilla. Mm -hmm. They went through mm -hmm. the south, di ba, mm -hmm. to return to Spain. And then the other paragraph said, uh, but the Americans are here. So ako sabi ko, parang rin na iyak ako sabi ko, kawawa naman ang Pilipino, hindi man lang nakarama sa kabayaan at all. So, in, and it did not help with my feeling kasi yung, ano na yun, pasara na yung archives, maglalakad ka na, pabalik sa yung dorm. So, sabi ko, talaga naman nakaka, nakakaawa talaga ang mga Pilipino na hindi nakaranas ng na moment na lang sa kabayaan. So, talagang, uh, uh, as, as, as historians, everything that will, our interpretations mm. will really be very subjective. Correct. No, there's mm. not, no such thing as subjective history. Mm. Uh, we, as historians, we choose the sources, mm -hmm. then we make our interpretation. We design. Yes. We design. So, uh, that will be the truth. Our truth. Our truth. No, that's what we But it's not with finality. No, it's not with finality. There's always something new because each generation will ask a different set of questions about the Katipunan, about the revolution. So it's not gas gas. So I, I, I don't think any topic in Philippine mm. history will be that over, you know, mm. uh, research. There will be always something new mm. because a different set of questions will mm. now, by a different generation, will be posing a different set of questions. Yeah, anong time na yun, sinabi ko nga, di ba, in the time of Augustinio, they were not probably asking that question. Ano yun ba talagang exactong transition, sa transitory, ano? And even uh, we have this uh, our first woman historian, the International, International Sona. Sona. She may not also have asked yeah. the same questions that you ask. Mm -hmm. yes. No, yes. Na, like for example, looking into that little thing, na Alboroto. Mm -hmm. And probably there were so many women there during the Alboroto. Mm -hmm. It's already a strike yeah. yeah. or a slow down. Mm -hmm. You can slow down work. Eh? At uh, in fact, yung mga ganyan actions, eh, hindi pa rin talaga nare-reveal masyado. Mm -hmm. But I think there are a lot of those things, no? So, in the time of Hanaren, nung siguro mga nagsulat sa Japanese occupation, they would not ask the same questions that now you are also asking. Well, Pero, yeah, mm, you need what, what was written immediately after the war is very emotional. Emotional, yeah. Kasi yun ang ano, no? Mm. Sakit na nangyari, mm. and suffered. So, so then, maybe 20, 30 years, they could, for some distance, they could say, but there were some plans that were mm -hmm. all right. I mean, mm -hmm. we benefited, let's say, at least culturally, mm -hmm. and, 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 and then further and further on now, one thing that I can do now is I have friends in other Southeast Asian countries, and we can compare the impact of the occupation mm -hmm. in Malaysia, in Indonesia, mm -hmm. and so the impact is quite different. Mm -hmm. Then you begin asking why was our reaction or why was our experience like that. So mm -hmm. it also widens out, not just national, but it moves into an international component. Mm -hmm. And then by doing comparative mm -hmm. occupation studies, mm -hmm. you find out that you, know, you learn more about yourself by thinking about looking at how other people also react. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you highlight the characteristics of yeah. uh, right. Just like doing revolution, if you do comparative revolution studies, mm -hmm. what made our revolution unique? Mm -hmm. And then you 
cannot do that until let's say you see what the Mexicans did, you see mm-hmm. what the Americans did. Ah, we need for that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mentioned kanina yung yung sa pinang personal engagement, ano? yung involvement mo, ano? and uh, uh, Dr. Kamara mentioned yung interpretation. And when I discuss historical problems now with my students, I really make it a point to tell them that the historian decides, di ba? And so that. Kailangan nilang malaman yun na the historian decides, and that is his interpretation, because his or her, no? Her interpretation, because dapat makita nila, they can also make a decision. Diba? Kasi in other words, there is power in, you know, in, in the position of the historian. Pero dapat malaman din yun ng mga readers, like our students, so that they can take a critical stance. No? Kasi ngayon, yung kinakwento natin, pinapakita talaga natin in each of our own ways. Pinapakita natin yung ako affected ng ganito, emotionally, tapos eh, ganito pala ang mga Pilipino, yung ganyan. Pero, ang ano, ang uh, dumalabas dito talaga is may stand tayo and we have power pero dapat sila meron ding certain degree of, you know, power and it's in the critical understanding of what we historians write. I think that just shows that history is very dynamic, yes. uh, it's very active, it's living history actually. That's right. Okay.